All right, good afternoon. We're sorry we're a little late. Um, some technical difficulties trying to figure this whole YouTube thing out. And I uh, hope that you're jo joining in with us. We wanted to do um, the seven last words that Christ spoke from the cross. And the verse, the first verse, simply so well, first of all, we want to just say happy um, Good Friday to everybody and happy Resurrection Weekend. <laughs> There's, there's some crazy times we're in, but this is what we are left to do, to still make sure that God's word get out there. And so many times before now, I've been asked to come and be a part with different uh, ministers, what we do, the seven last words, and each minister will have one of those uh, seven words to expound on. But today I'm going to briefly just go through the seven last words and give you what he said and what that means to us as believers. Uh, the first one says, Jesus speaks to the Father, and the first thing he said from the cross was found in Luke 23 and 34. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. My God, in the midst of his excruciating suffering, the heart of Jesus was still focused on others rather than himself. And here we see the nature of his love, his unconditional love and divine I can only imagine, even today, that he's still interceding on our behalf, uh, saying, Father, forgive them, even in this pandemic, because there are some who still don't believe, who don't want to trust God. But that's all we have left to, to depend on right now, taking everything else away, but for us to now lean on him. Um, the second words that he said from the cross is, Jesus speaks to the criminal who's on the cross with him, and that's found in Luke 23 and 43 he says i tell you the truth today you will be with me in paradise because one of the criminals who was crucified with christ had recognized who jesus really was and he expressed faith in him as savior so here we see god's grace being poured out through faith even then and as jesus assured the dying man of his forgiveness and eternal salvation that should speak to every sinner that's out there today to say that if Christ could stop dying long enough, my God, to save a thief as they were dying on the cross, then surely he can stop long enough to save us in our sins. But we have to turn to him and repent from our sins. He's not going to just force it upon us. We have to be willing and want to. The third thing Jesus speaks from the cross, he says, Jesus speaks to Mary and John in John 19, 26 and 27. When Jesus says, uh, Jesus saw his mother standing there at the cross and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby was John. And he said to his mother, he said, dear woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, he said, here is your mother. The NIV says it like this. Jesus looking down from the cross was still filled with concerns of a son for the earthly needs of his mother. And none of his brothers were there to care for her. So he gave this task to the Apostle John. And here we clearly see Christ's humanity. He shares and shows that same humanity to each and every one of us today. Take care of our elderly. Take care of our mothers. Take care of those who are left in our care that we love. We have to look after for, especially during this time. It's a great time to take some time away and look on and check on somebody else. Not think about ourselves only. The fourth thing Christ says, he says, Jesus cries out to the Father, and this is in Matthew 27 and 46, also found in Mark 15 and 34. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And that's translated in the New King, the New King James Version, rather. But in the darkest hours of Christ's suffering, Jesus cried out the opening words that were also we can find in Psalms 22. Please read that in your spare time. But it says the same thing. Why God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Well, right now we have a whole lot of spare time. And although much has been suggested regarding the meaning of this phrase, it was quite apparent the agony that Christ must have felt as he expressed separation from God. And here we see the father turning away from his son, Jesus, before he bore the full weight of every one of our sins, yours and mine. That's what Christ did for us. 
The fifth thing Jesus says from the cross, he's thirsty. That's found in John 19 and 28. Jesus knew that everything was now finished. And to fulfill the scriptures, he said, I am thirsty. As translated in the New Living Translation, Jesus refused the initial drink of vinegar, gall, and myrrh. In Matthew 27, 34, and Mark 15 and 23, they offered it to alleviate his suffering. But here, several hours later, we see Jesus fulfilling the messianic prophecy found in Psalm 69 and 21. And it says, they also gave me gall for my food, and for my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Can you imagine Jesus up there thirsty and they want to give him vinegar instead of giving him water to drink? But that's because he is the bread of life and he is the water that we can drink and we'll never thirst again. The sixth thing he said is, it is finished. That's found in John 19 and 30. Jesus knew that he was suffering the crucifixion for a purpose. And earlier he had said in John 10 and 18 of his life, he says, no one takes it from me but I lay it down on my own accord. He says, I have the authority to lay it down and I also have the authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. And these three words were packed with meaning for what, what was finished here was not only Christ's earthly life, not only his sufferings and dying, not only the payment for sin and the redemption of the world, but the very reason and the purpose he came to, fin to earth to fin was finished. That's what happened. The reason he was on earth at that moment when he said it's finished, he knew that what he came here to do, it was finished. His final act of obedience was complete. The scriptures had been fulfilled. And so now we're left with the seventh word, the last thing Jesus says from the cross. And that's found in Luke 23 and 46. Jesus called out with a loud voice, saying, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last breath. Here Jesus closes with the words of Psalm 31 and 5, speaking to the Father. We see his complete trust in the Lord, or in the Father. And Jesus entered death in the same way he lived each day of his life, offering up his life as a perfect sacrifice and placing himself in God's hand. He was a servant, and so should we be, a servant. I tell you, I want to be like Jesus in my heart. And all I want to hear him say is well done, thy good and faithful servant. Too many times we're looking for accolades here on earth and pats on the back. But how many of you really know that the best thing to do and to be is to be a servant? That's the true mark of being like Jesus. I'd like to take just a minute to pray with you right now as we continue on and go into this rest of our resurrection weekend. We ask that you would join us again Sunday morning at 1015, where we'll be back on YouTube sharing the word of God to lift somebody's spirits during these crazy times. Let's pray. Father, we come right now, Lord, just to say thank you for everything you've done, for all that you're doing in our lives. God, we ask that you continue to bless us and keep us. Lord, we know that right now we have nothing else we can depend on but you. Lord, I've had so many friends who've called and written in asking for prayer folk who are laying in the hospitals fighting for their lives. God, we want you to remember every one of them. Touch right now, God. Go into those rooms, even where the doctors and the nurses and other family members can't go. You can go, and that's in the spirit realm. So Lord, we ask them right now if you can just go in, and those who is not, you're not ready to take them, Lord, let a miracle happen in their life, that they can be a testimony that it was nobody but God that spared my life, even during the coronavirus pandemic. You showed up and showed out once again. Happy Easter and happy Good Friday today to every one of you who are listening. We bless God and we thank you for joining us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.